Have you ever found yourself tangled in the complexities of C++ programming, especially when trying to generate the Cartesian product of multiple input ranges? It can be quite a challenge, right? If that sounds like you, stick around because today we're diving into how to tackle this problem using iterators and variadic templates. I totally get it. Trying to create a function that handles a variable number of input ranges can feel overwhelming. You're not alone in this struggle. Many developers face similar hurdles when working with C++. It's a common issue that can lead to confusion and frustration. Here's the specific question we're addressing today. One user asked, how can I create a function to gener generate the Cartesian product of a variable number of input ranges using iterators and variadic templates? They provided a basic format for the function and outlined their thought process. Sound familiar? Let's break it down together. So what exactly is the Cartesian product? In simple terms, it's a way to combine all possible pairs from two or more sets. For example, if you have two sets A and B, the Cartesian product AXB gives you all combinations of elements from both sets. Understanding this concept is crucial as we dive into the implementation. And don't go anywhere. By the end of this video, you'll not only understand how to implement the Cartesian product, but also gain insights into leveraging C14 features effectively. Trust me, you won't want to miss it. To begin implementing the Cartesian product function, the user should first create a tuple from the variadic arguments. This can be done using the standard library function called makeTuple. Next, the user needs to dereference each iterator in the tuple. This will allow access to the elements of each input range. The user can achieve this by using a helper function that iterates through the tuple. For the third step, the user should increment each iterator in the tuple sequentially. This will generate all possible combinations of the values in the input ranges. The user can utilize a loop to achieve this. Finally, the user should store the results in the output range. This can be done by pushing back the current combination of elements into the result iterator. Fun fact, the Cartesian product is not just a programming concept. It's also used in mathematics and set theory. It's fascinating how these ideas overlap in different fields. Now, let's look at the answers provided by other users. An alternative approach provided by another user involves using the stead apply function introduced in C17. They suggest implementing an fmap function for tuples, which allows you to apply a transformation to each element in the tuple. With this fmap function, you can dereference all iterators and increment them in a single step. This simplifies the process of generating the Cartesian product. Let's take a moment to review another user's answer. An alternative solution for generating the Cartesian product involves using a function that accepts output iterators and pairs of input ranges. The user defines an increment function to handle the iteration through the ranges. This function checks if the current iterator has reached the end and resets it if necessary, allowing for all combinations to be generated. In the provided code, the user demonstrates how to use vectors of different types, such as integers, characters, and floats, to create a Cartesian product. The results are stored in a vector of a custom struct, showcasing the versatility of the approach. Let's take a look at an answer from another user. An alternative solution for generating the Cartesian product uses a callable object, like a lambda function, to access elements from input ranges defined by iterators. This approach allows for a more natural syntax, similar to the STL style. The user demonstrates this with a code example that combines multiple ranges, such as vectors and sets, into a Cartesian product. The user explains that their implementation uses C17's steady apply to invoke the callable with the collected references from the iterators. The function iterates recursively over the ranges, appending references to a tuple until all items are collected, at which point the callable is executed. Here's a pro tip. When working with variadic templates, always ensure that your code is clean and well-structured.
This will make it easier to debug and maintain in the long run. And there you have it. You've learned how to create a function for the Cartesian product using iterators and variadic templates. Remember, practice makes perfect, so don't hesitate to experiment with your code. If you found this video helpful, hit the subscribe button for more programming tips and tricks.